Hey guys, Mike here. In this video, I'm going to explain why Monster Hunter is so hard to master. Now, notice I said so hard to master and not hard to beat. I think most intermediate players will be able to roll credits in Monster Hunter World Iceborne fairly easily, maybe around one to three carts at maximum, with most hunts being no carts. So on a surface level, the game is not that hard to actually beat, but it's actually a very hard game to master. So what Monster Hunter does is it gives you a lot of Pyrrhic victories and that, you know, you'll get the hunt done in 20 to 30 minutes on the first clear, but it doesn't feel good. Like you got tossed around by the monster quite a bit of times and maybe if you've been carded once or twice. So even though you technically won, you didn't really feel like you won. And the reason for that is because the developers of Monster Hunter are not really focused on creating a fair fight that much. They're more concerned with creating a great combat simulator. And the thing about a combat simulator is that it's not going to be fair. <laughs> it's just a realization of what they feel combat should be like. But because they've created such a detailed and engaging combat simulator, that as a byproduct has translated to a really good game. And it's because they haven't compromised on making certain aspects of the simulator easy or fair is the reason why the gameplay is so engaging and why people keep coming back to play it. So you can see here in one of the recent videos I did, I basically did a time frame data analysis of the punish windows of all the different attacks that Glavinus does. And for most of his basic attacks when he's enraged, all of his punishment windows are around 1.5 seconds or less. Most of them are actually less than one second. And that's assuming you have perfect positioning and you're like already in the right place, ready to attack the monster, which is probably not gonna happen. These punish windows are actually gonna be less than what is written on screen. And this is a source for a lot of the frustration in Monster Hunter because a lot of the video guides on YouTube, they'll teach you how to do your 10 second big punishing combo. But if every attack that the monster does is less than three seconds, means you, you're not going to do a 10 second punisher like ever when the monster's on its feet. You're really only gonna do that when the monster's on its ground or in very rare moves. And this is where the meat of the gameplay of Monster Hunter is that not a lot of people talk about. It's really understanding these time windows and how you interact with the monster in these time frames. I would say your build doesn't even contribute that much to your success on a hunt, maybe about 30%. But the ironic thing is people focus on builds so much. But if you want to see the largest gains in improvement in your gameplay, it's really focusing on timing and positioning and the monster itself. To put this in perspective, you can just learn three moves from your weapon. And then if you just focus all your attention on the monster and its openings and its moveset, you would do better than someone who has studied the weapon extensively for hours trying to learn all of the different combos and ways to get in and out of different combos and different paths that you can get to each move. If you don't study any of that, but you just study the monster, you'll do better than that player who just focuses on their weapon. And, and that makes sense because the star of the game is not you, <laughs> it's the monsters. So the takeaway from this video is if you take less focus off of yourself, but focus more on what the monster is doing, you'll see so much more improvement in your gameplay and become a better hunter. Hope that gave you a different perspective on Monster Hunter and thanks for watching.